Ever since their first fight in the Saiyan Saga, Goku and Vegeta are constantly being compared to each other, with fans always asking who's the stronger of the two at different points in the story. Obviously, this conversation doesn't matter until both of them are adults. Throughout the events of original Dragon Ball, Vegeta was not only five years older than Goku, but also far stronger. Even if you don't believe he had a power level of 18,000 at the time, Vegeta tells Frieza that he surpassed King Vegeta when he was only a child, King Vegeta being the only other Saiyan to be ranked super elite. So that makes one for Vegeta. Let's keep track of how many times he's actually ahead of Goku. Once we hit the Saiyan Saga, the conversation actually starts, and there's more to talk about than you might think. Comparing their base power levels, Vegeta is more than double Goku's power level of over 8,000. As most people know by this point, over 9,000 is a dub mistake. The interesting point here is Kaioken, how it works, and how it doesn't really make sense with future story developments. Kaioken is a flat multiplier, and in this arc, Goku is able to use it from two to four times. This makes Goku's power level range from over 8,000 in base to over 32,000 with a maxed out Kaioken. So you may be wondering now, how does Vegeta survive this Kamehameha that's almost twice his power level? We don't know. Later on, power levels only need to be around 30% in difference for someone to basically one-shot their opponent. The only explanation would be that Goku doesn't want to kill Vegeta, so he's just doing enough to beat him, but even then, wouldn't a Kaioken times three be more than enough? The more interesting feat in this beam struggle is the fact that it's a beam struggle at all puts the Gallop Gun way above the Kamehameha in terms of power output, despite the attacks being directly compared to each other. Of course, the fight becomes completely one-sided if there's a moon or Vegeta is willing to lose some of his own base power to make an artificial moon. The Ozaru form is a 10 times boost, so even the Kaioken can compete at this point, and Vegeta one-sidedly wins. I think the way the fight played out in the Saiyan Saga is the best way to understand it. Do you think Goku would be alive if Krillin, Gohan, and Yajirobe didn't show up to save him? The next arc may surprise you, though. What is the next arc again? I can't think when I'm hungry. Thankfully, Factor is sponsoring this video. If you're like me and you're busy not reading a 40-year-old manga, it can be hard to eat well, but Factor makes eating easy and convenient for anyone. Ooh. You can even choose a meal plan that's best for you, like keto, vegetarian, or my personal go-to, Protein Plus, which packs 30 grams of protein into light and balanced meals. And every week, you get to pick from over 35 fresh, never frozen meals, so meal prepping becomes a breeze. The best part is, all your meals are dropped off directly at your door, and then they're ready in just two minutes in the microwave. Cooking or ordering out aren't gonna beat the turnaround time for meals like this creamy Parmesan chicken. With Factor cutting down my cooking time, I might be the first fan to actually read the manga. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code CARTHU50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Oh right, it's Namek. On Namek, Vegeta has a Zenkai boost that takes him to a power level of 24,000, which would be impressive if Kaioken times three Goku in the Saiyan Saga wasn't stronger than that, and more importantly, Vegeta doesn't have his tail anymore, so there's no Ozaru form for him to rely on either. This ignores the fact that Goku, before training on the ship to Namek, gets an unquantifiable Zenkai boost, meaning it's possible he'd be able to win with a Kaioken times two, and at the very least, better maintain a Kaioken times three. I can't see a way for Vegeta to beat Goku at this point in the story. By the middle of the Frieza saga, Vegeta gets his second Zenkai boost, which results in him getting a power level of around 30,000. The original manga says 20,000, but this is corrected in the anime and the Kanzenban for obvious reasons. Depending on the translation, Vegeta is either slightly above or below 30,000. So to be fair, I think just saying 30,000 is a good enough middle ground. It's not really relevant though, since Goku rests on the last day to planet Namek. So by the time Vegeta is at a power level of 30,000, Goku is confident he can handle a Kaioken times 10, which even without including his new base power level of 90,000 would be more than enough to handle Vegeta. Funny enough, Vegeta's loss to Raccoon gives him a massive boost in power level as well, taking him all the way to 250,000 according to V-Jump. If you disagree with that, fine, but it is the only way for Vegeta to have a remote chance in this fight since Goku only needs a Kaioken times three to beat him, and at this point, he can easily sustain that. After this, it just stays one-sided for the rest of the arc. Some people speculate Vegeta has a power level of two million when facing Final Form Frieza, so if that's true, he's stronger than Goku before he's healed and weaker than Goku 
Goku after he's healed. It's a weird time where Vegeta has a power increase while Goku's incapacitated the entire time it's on display. When Goku is healed, that's the end of the arc with him solidly on top. Vegeta is dead, Goku's base power level is stronger than his, and on top of that he has consistent Kaioken times 10, burst of Kaioken times 20, and even Super Saiyan. Though it is stated he didn't learn to fully use it at will till Yardrat. Don't we see Goku turn into a Super Saiyan at will on Namek? I guess it really doesn't matter though. He doesn't need it to beat Vegeta. But this next arc is where it gets really back and forth. I'd love to spend the next five minutes speculating on future Goku and future Vegeta, but we don't have much info to go off of. To me, it seems like Goku stays stronger, especially if Vegeta never gets Super Saiyan. In the anime, we see future Vegeta as a Super Saiyan, but in a DBS bonus chapter, we see Vegeta fighting Android 17 and 18 in his base form. Really basic take, if he has Super Saiyan, he might be stronger, but if he doesn't have Super Saiyan, he's likely still weaker. Now to the present. Trunks warns about the androids appearing in three years, which gives every everyone the chance to train. After the training, Super Saiyan Vegeta is just stronger than Super Saiyan Goku. You might think it's due to the heart virus, but Piccolo, who trained with Goku for the entire three years, says multiple times that Vegeta is just stronger. And when Goku wakes up after recovering from the virus, he thinks he doesn't stand a chance if Vegeta didn't. So at the very least, he's not denying it. This is probably the best time to mention that while a spirit bomb or clever use of instant transmission could win Goku the fight if it's close, both seem out of character enough for me to just not really consider them. After this, Vegeta uses the time chamber first and further widens his lead against Goku. People overlook this, but Vegeta actually learned how to access Super Saiyan Grade 2 in the first two months and spent the rest of his year in the time chamber just increasing his power. Then Goku uses the time chamber, and I'll just let him say it. I know when I'm being patronized and I don't care for the suggestion that you're stronger than me. Yeah, I wasn't really suggesting. What? It's really insane when you think about it. Goku takes the lead back by mastering Super Saiyan while only using 10 and a half months in the time chamber. And even then, he had to spend a good amount of that time teaching Gohan how to transform in the first place. Vegeta even uses the time chamber for another year after this, only to still be far behind Goku and Gohan. Which might be the most pathetic thing I've ever heard. After this, Vegeta vows to never fight again. Never mind, that's the most pathetic thing I've ever heard. After the seven year time skip, it only gets worse for Vegeta. Goku is so much stronger than him when showing off a glimpse of Super Saiyan 2 in his fight with Yakon that Vegeta allows himself to be used by Bobbity so he can have his potential unlocked. This power makes him Goku's equal, well, base to base at least. Of course, despite Goku saying he's going all out against Majin Vegeta or saying he's only Majin Vegeta's equal, he kept Super Saiyan 3 in his back pocket, a gap that even Bobbity's help couldn't overcome. I could definitely talk about the Buu Saga more, but this is the arc where Vegeta's big moment is saying, I'm not him. Do I need to say anything else? Luckily for us, modern Dragon Ball really changes up the dynamic between these two, leading to Vegeta being less in Goku's shadow and more so his direct rival for the first time in the series. It all starts in Battle of Gods, where Goku is stronger than Vegeta, except for the My Bulma scene, where he briefly surpasses Super Saiyan 3 Goku as only a Super Saiyan 2. We don't know if this rage power actually sticks with Vegeta after the scene, but it doesn't really matter since Goku goes on to get Super Saiyan God from the ritual anyway. And even worse for Vegeta, he absorbs that power into his base form, except in the manga. So he may have that going for him at least. I'll give him half a point. We don't know if Goku has access to Super Saiyan God after the ritual, but we do know that base power up is more than enough to easily handle any of Vegeta's transformations. Vegeta doesn't stay behind for long though, since he trains with Whis for six months before Goku does, which leads to even Goku thinking Vegeta has surpassed him. The statement does seem uncertain, but since no one denies it, I'd say Vegeta at least has a slight edge over Goku here when comparing base forms. The real question is, does Super Saiyan 3 close the gap between them? And unfortunately, I think the answer might be yes. You see, when Goku starts training with Vegeta, they do a weighted exercise together, but Vegeta's weights are doubled to compensate for him being stronger than Goku. This isn't a perfect measurement since lifting strength and battle power aren't linearly correlated, but I'd say the intention of the writing is to say that Vegeta is about twice as powerful as Goku. Super Saiyan 3 is a four times multiplier on top of Super Saiyan 2, so Vegeta should still be weaker than Super Saiyan 3 Goku, even with his training head start. Once we get to Resurrection F, both of the Saiyans have access to Super Saiyan Blue and everything is a 
implying that they're equals at this point. Neither has a direct advantage over the other, aside from hypothetical battle tactics that they wouldn't realistically implement into a fight. This is where the manga and anime diverge heavily. In the Universe 6 tournament, Goku and Vegeta are still treated as equals in the manga, and the reason Vegeta loses to Hit is only because he used Super Saiyan Blue earlier and it wore down its power. In the anime, it's really different. They decided the rival dynamic had to go so they could sell more figures. The anime has Goku use Kaioken times 10 in Super Saiyan Blue, which is a massive power increase, but I actually don't think he'd use it in character against Vegeta, especially since he doesn't use it against Goku Black and Zamasu until they merge. Both because one, Goku Black could likely copy the technique after seeing it in battle once. The first time he saw it was on God Tube before he had Goku's body, so he couldn't copy it then. And two, because it thrashes his body body after using it. The cost of using Kaioken is just too great at this point in the series, but he might use it if they were both bloodlusted, I guess. Speaking of the future Trunks arc, the anime has a start with Goku and Vegeta equal in Super Saiyan Blue until Goku gets a rage boost in episode 61, putting him decently ahead. But just like the My Bulma scene, it's hard to be sure if this power was temporary or not. Vegeta gets his own power boost after training in the time chamber for six months, putting him ahead of Goku by a pretty significant margin. And you'd think that'd be it. Without another time for Goku to train, the arc should end with Vegeta ahead. But no. Goku just randomly uses his full power against Merge Zamas and performs better than Vegeta and Trunks together. To be fair, this power does cost him the use of his arms temporarily, but at worst, he seems to somehow be back to even with Vegeta, and at best, he's stronger than him again. The Dragon Ball Super manga is more blatant about it, though. Goku uses a mastered version of Super Saiyan Blue that can keep up with Merge Zamas, a form that even Vegeta concedes is better than him since it can continuously use Super Saiyan Blue's full power. This is really the only manga change that's worth mentioning for this arc, so hopefully the next arc is just as easy, right? At the beginning of the Tournament of Power, the anime and manga have Goku get a bit rusty. In the anime, this might put Vegeta slightly ahead, while in the manga, Vegeta uses this time to catch up by learning Mastered Super Saiyan Blue and directly says they're equals to each other, as does Topo at the beginning of the Tournament of Power. Then during his first fight with Jiren, Goku uses a Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken for the first time in the manga. A lot of people think this isn't the Kaioken, even though it's directly called that in V-Jump. Regardless though, it's at the very least basically Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. This gives Goku a lead on Vegeta, though it's at the cost of his body. This form is short-lived though, as Master Roshi teaches Goku the principles of Ultra Instinct from a Turtle School perspective, allowing him to use Ultra Instinct Sign and be massively ahead of Vegeta for all of six pages. That's enough for Vegeta to get mad about it though. Vegeta uses this as motivation to access the manga's version of Super Saiyan Blue Evolve. Toyotaro says this form isn't Blue Evolved, and it just looks like Blue Evolved, so that way it's more in line with the anime. But if he wants me to call it something else, he should probably name it. This puts Vegeta ahead again, as this form performs better than Goku's Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, and Goku can't access Ultra Instinct Sign again yet. Then by the time the chapter is over, Goku is an Ultra Instinct Sign again, and that quickly turns into Ultra Instinct, putting Goku back on top for a little bit again, until losing access to this form, putting Vegeta back in the lead with his stronger Super Saiyan Blue form. Now, for the anime, I'm going to desperately try to keep this as focused as possible. It really could be its own video if I don't. The tournament starts with Goku and Vegeta seeming to be equals in base after Goku gets rusty and Vegeta trains in the Room of Spirit and Time. But we see early on that Goku can maintain a Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 10 with ease and even a times 20, giving him a clear edge. Vegeta's only advantage is his final flash, which is stronger than Goku's Spirit Bomb, that he charged to be at least stronger than any attack he can use in Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 since Jiren let him charge it as much as he wanted. However, he did the same for Vegeta, so he probably couldn't use it in a fight against Goku. Also, Goku unlocks Ultra Instinct Sign three separate times throughout the tournament, and two of them happen before Vegeta's final flash is even shown. In either of these forms, Goku would likely be able to tank the attack even if he didn't dodge it, which he would. This is also ignoring the fact that Goku and Vegeta got stronger as the tournament went on. Goku blatantly pushed Jiren further with Super Saiyan Blue than he did with his first use of Ultra Instinct Sign, which should be a clear moment of Goku being ahead of Vegeta, but after Vegeta recovers, he comes back with a power boost 
Boost and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, which is an equivalent to Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20. From here, they remain basically equals until Vegeta is eliminated and Goku enters Ultra Instinct Sign the third time and the full Ultra Instinct as well. Afterwards, Goku is stronger than ever, a trend for him after losing Ultra Instinct, as shown by him being able to fight on par with Android 17's energy attacks. Remember, Android 17 and 18 have infinite energy, so their blast attacks don't lose power over time like regular fighters. Android 17 was around the level of pre-tournament of power Super Saiyan Blue Goku, which puts Goku at this point far ahead of Vegeta by the end of the tournament. With the tournament of power covered, we're thankfully back to more simple subjects. Like Dragon Ball Super Broly, where the movie follows the anime continuity and the manga has a side story that happens mostly off screen. As for the movie, we have an interview from its director, Tatsuya Nagamine, who says Goku is approaching the level of the gods while Vegeta is furiously trying to catch up. This is perfectly in line with how the anime's tournament of power ended and is even shown in the movie. You see, when Vegeta enters Super Saiyan God, Broly is only beginning to transform into his Ikari form. This mid-transformation power is enough to knock Vegeta around despite the god form he's using. When Goku steps up to fight, Broly fully transforms as shown by his collar breaking off and his hair fully standing up, but Goku is able to fight against him decently well in both base form and Super Saiyan. Then with his own Super Saiyan God form, he's able to restrain Broly with the God Bind, which takes another power up from Broly to overcome. So to me, it's clear that this movie has Goku ahead of Vegeta. Then we have the two manga arcs that I've covered in separate videos if you need their stories, but luckily they will be pretty easy. The Moro arc has Goku and Vegeta start off as rivaling each other in base, though Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue evolved form should make him superior to Goku, but they're often drawn as equals, so I'm not 100% sure. Vegeta and Goku go their separate ways in this arc to find their own way to handle Moro. Goku gains mastery over Ultra Instinct Sign, and Vegeta learns spirit control on Yardrat. While Ultra Instinct Sign is of course a powerful form, Moro himself seems to imply that Super Saiyan Blue evolved Vegeta is beyond Goku's power. Of course, Goku goes on to fully control Ultra Instinct, which puts him vastly ahead of Vegeta by the end of the arc and into the beginning of the Granola arc. Speaking of the Granola arc, it has Goku and Vegeta going down different paths once again, with Goku further mastering Ultra Instinct so he can fully wield it in every form, not just his limit-breaking silver-haired form, while Vegeta decides to learn the powers of destruction from Beerus. Hey look, the Ultra Instinct dropouts are teaming up. Isn't that cute? After their training and Vegeta's acquisition of Ultra Ego, it actually seems like Vegeta has a notable lead on Goku, as Ultra Ego's power grows with battle spirit, and that grows with the damage he takes in battle. In theory, with Vegeta's power unbounded like this, it's always a race to beat him before he gets strong enough to beat his opponent. So with Goku's time-limited Ultra Instinct not being able to last long enough against a Granola who wasn't going all out, while Vegeta in Ultra Ego was able to get Granola to the point of killing both of them as the only way to win, I think it's clear who has the advantage. This remains true as the arc goes on as well, with Vegeta later performing extremely well against Gas to the point of scaring him while Goku has to meditate to find a way to improve himself. Of course, he gets an answer. He determines that his best form to face Gas is an Ultra Instinct Sign, a form that lets Goku use his emotions and fight like himself, not imitating Whis or Meris. This is the power that forces Gas to use up more of his lifespan to overcome, which clearly puts Goku ahead once again. Dragon Ball Super Superhero only has Goku and Vegeta fight in base, but Vegeta does win, so take that as you will. It doesn't say anything about their full power, though it does show us that base to base, they are extremely close. So Vegeta's been ahead of Goku about 11 and a half times throughout the series. Check out this video if you want to learn about Goku's training journey, and thank you so very much for watching.